How are you folks? It's all early and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator. And today we are going to do the last bush trip from the Nordics and Greenland world update. And then we'll be caught up again until the next world update with more bush trips if they have any. I assume they're just going to keep throwing them out there. Um, so we'll be doing this forever, I guess. I guess that's my YouTube job security. Although I made $300 last year on YouTube. <laughs> 300. But anyway, enough joking aside, the only bush trip we have left is this one, the Baltic coast of Denmark and Sweden, but it's here twice. And I already mentioned before, it's because this time, in this one you do it with the analog 172. This one you do it in the glass cockpit. I'm having a hard time speaking. The glass cockpit 172. Um, so... If I do this one, does progress also go on this one? Or if I want to keep my 100% bush trip streak, do I have to go back and do this one after I do this one? So we'll see. We'll do a leg or two, and then we'll come back to the screen and see if progress goes on both. I doubt it. That would be nice. Um, so my plan then is to record this one, and then maybe this just do this one off camera quickly, because when I don't talk and stuff, it's faster to set autopilot land and I don't know. I think it's annoying because if they wanted to use this airplane twice, do a different bush trip. Even if it's a similar bush trip in the same area. But I went through these and they're exactly the same. So I'm super annoyed by that because I don't have, I mean I have time but I don't want to do the same bush trip twice. There's like 50 something of them here now. And um, yeah, I just don't want to do the same one twice. But anyway, so let's stop complaining and let's click on this one. With the 172 Classic, there still should be autopilot, which will help. Um, it's only six hours. Um, so 11 legs. I'm definitely not going to do one leg per video because that would be 11 videos, and that's kind of silly for you all. Um, maybe because I do a long introduction, we'll do two legs together the first time, and maybe two or three combined some other times. just depends how it's going. So we'll definitely do the first two legs on this video. Um, yeah. Alrighty, let's see here. What are we doing? We are on the Baltic Sea coast of Denmark and Sweden in the default Cessna 172 Skyhawk. The Baltic Sea is an inland sea of the North Atlantic Ocean and forms coastlines of a number of Northern European countries, including Denmark, Sweden, and Finland. It connects to the North Atlantic Ocean through the North Sea in a series of waterways, including the Danish Straits, also called the Belt, the Kattegat, and the Sky. Skaderak. I should have practiced. Skaderak. Skaderak? It comprises a number of bays and gulfs, including the Gulf of Finland, the easternmost arm of the Baltic Sea, the Gulf of Bothin, Both Bothnia, its northernmost aspect. The Baltic Sea, the Baltic, is a realm of exquisite beauty featuring a variety of natural coastal features. The coast and areas directly inland boast a wide array of architectural delights, from weathered stone castles to cutting edge modern structures. That's what I'm all about, cutting edge modern structures. The Baltic Sea is one of the most economically important bodies of water in the world. More than 70,000 ships pass through the sea each year, and some of Europe's most important parts of the Baltic, including those of Copenhagen, Stockholm, and Helsinki. The Baltic coast of Denmark and Sweden bush trip visits some of the very best that this region has to offer. Traversing coastal lands of Denmark and Sweden, it begins with a journey along the belts of the sea's western margin and forges the path up to the coast of its northern arm. Instructions, watch your fuel. You can only refuel at airports with fuel or by hitting repair and refuel on your keyboard, which I do, and I added that. You can change various settings such as weather, time, and displays. Park the aircraft cold and dark. Stay on the runway at small airfields to finish the flight. Yeah, also we're at a serial offline. Um, speaking of that, what do our runways look like? Good. Not bad. Eh, it'll be okay. Eh, it could be difficult. No, wait, never mind. I thought this was the runway. That's the runway. Yeah, so this one is fine. That one's fine. Fine, fine. That's kind of small, but it'll be fine. That's what she said. That'll be fine. That was small too. What is this? Half turf, half pavement? That'd be fine, that'd be fine, that'd be fine. So we only have one runway. That could be annoying. And no, it's, see, look at this. Look how tiny those planes are. This makes a huge runway. They're all gonna be easy peasy. Alrighty, that's the introduction. I'll explain how bush trips work with me in case you haven't seen one as soon as we get through here. Actually, I changed my mind. I'm gonna keep this up so we know 
what we're doing. So we're going to start here. Oh, my mouse doesn't work because so I'm pointing and you can't see it. We're starting at Stockholm and we're going to zigzag around the coast. Might have to get some elevation, but looks like it's going to be pretty straight forward. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be too complicated. So if you haven't done a bush trip with me before, what we do is we go through and we read about what we're doing. And then we'll fly there and we'll look at it and read about what we're doing, fly there and look at it. However, sometimes I will stop talking and just give you visuals of what we're supposed to look at. But I make sure you get it in sightseeing, I call it. Other times we stick together the whole time and you hear me yap away. It just depends on how I'm feeling. It's different every time. As far as navigation goes, um, we do have a VFR map. We do have the nav log. And this, we do have GPS. And we do have autopilot down here. Oh, they can barely see it. There's autopilot. So, different ways to do it. You can do old school where you don't use GPS, you turn it off or whatever, and you use your gauges and you use your nav log, tells you what to do. Sometimes, well, then with autopilot, you would use the nav log, but just use autopilot. It makes it easier to like look around. Um, other times, we have GPS and autopilot, so you can just tell your GPS and autopilot to work together and you just sit back and relax. Otherwise, you can fly out here once this loads. And you can make this purple by using your CDI to GPS, and you can just follow that purple line once it comes up. Different ways to do it. We've done all different ways, from completely manual flying with the nav log to GPS using autopilot and sitting back and doing nothing. So I have nothing to prove to anybody, nothing we need to do specifically. We just do however we feel like it in the moment. I do have a checklist for this. I don't feel like using it. So we're just going to do what I can from memory. I think we have to turn the fuel on. No fuel's already on in this one. I'll think of the 152. Uh, let's do fuel pump for realism, although we don't need to. Fuel is already forward on my yoke, which means it's mixtures in there. Crack the throttle a little bit. Turn the key. Should start. Shouldn't be anything else we need to do other than turn on my personal volume. Oh, it didn't start. That means we forgot a fuel thing somewhere. Um, or a primer, even. Fuel is on, right? Um, that's both. Fuel selectors both. Shut off. You pull... Oh! Really? I've never seen that before in cold and dark where the fuel is pulled out. Huh. This, that must be an update they did and I didn't pay attention to the change log. Alright, let's come here. Do we, How come that's not on? Maybe we have to turn the avionics on and that'll turn on. What else do you want? Pedo heat for now. Fuel pump come off. We'll do taxi. Let's check lights now. Anything else? Nope. We can do what I mean. We can do a bunch of things. I am going to leave that. Well, wait. Ouch, what's that for? Okay, that did turn on now. Isn't there a way I can see that autopilot without having to take the yoke out? I guess we just have to leave it in. Yeah, leave it out, I mean. Uh, one set of flaps down. There are two or three flaps in this. Three flaps, so we'll do one set. Alrighty, let's go over here to the Garmin on. Usually you have to hit enter. Okay, yep. Yep. Okay. And okay. And we don't want that screen. We want to get to a different screen. We, yeah, you can, this is super powerful now, but I don't want to do any of it. I just want to get to the main screen, yo. There we go. Um, where's my thing? I'm looking for my thing that tells me... Hang on. Okay, well this is the CD I was talking about, GPS. That would make this line purple. You can follow the purple line up here if you want to. But I'm looking for something now, so I'll come back here when I found it. Here we go, this thing. This tells you how off course you are. Um, is it on this one too? It should be. Ooh, that tells you if you're going to hit something. That's cool. Um, where'd it go? Oh, down here you can use it too. Okay, let's use that down there. This will make sure we're on course. This one, let's use the um, terrain. So we can see if we're going to hit something when mountains come up and stuff. That would be cool. Alrighty. Zoom that into like that, maybe. We'll adjust that. That's hard to look at, but it'll turn green once you get in there. Don't worry. Otherwise, there we go. If we do give us any radios to use, let me put them in over here. Like VORs, AD, ADF, NDB. I doubt it, but they might give it to us. They gave it to us in the last one. Um, hello? You're not working? There we go. Alrighty, cool. Alright, simple enough. Let's read about what we're doing, where we're going. And we'll take off here. So, oh boy, I'm not going to read every word of this. It's too much. 33 minute leg, though. After lifting off, set a course paralleling the coast and remaining inland of the shoreline. 
Denmark has a rich maritime heritage retaining its seafaring lineage back to the day of the Vikings. You can read about the rest of that if you want to by pausing the video. Gain a visual on the intersection of highways 111 and 24 and follow the merged highway south to the city of Reeb. Reeb, eh? Reeb? Reeb? It's located on the river, four miles inland from the sea. There you go. Sight the southwest corner of that place and then gain visual on the cathedral, which you all hear me complain, at least on PC, when you got these handmade artifacts and things and buildings, they start super cartoonish and stand out like a sore thumb. They're easy to spot. Very easy to spot. Um, let's look for it. 170 foot one tower. Should be pretty easy to see. Um, there you go. You can read about the rest of it. Um, let me look ahead here regarding elevation or altitude. Looks pretty flat. At least for this le this first leg. So the reason why I mentioned that is there are so many different ways you can... Um, so many different ways you can decide how high to fly. You can fly super high and stay above all your terrain and just cruise at altitude. You can stay low to the ground to see your POIs and things of interest. But then you gotta go up and down, up and down, up and down based on terrain, right? So just decide what you wanna do. We're gonna start at two grand. If that feels too low or too high, we'll make adjustments. So for autopilot, We'll hit autopilot, that'll hold our stuff, then we'll do nav to follow GPS, because that's what CDI is set to. And we'll do up and down to climb to 2,000 feet. It's super simple, and I overthink it all the freaking time. So there you go, that's all we got to do. Do we have ATC in this? We do have ATC in this. Don't need to use it, but we're going to announce we're clear. Uh, announce runway for takeoff. There's no ATIS. We don't know what the weather is like. Yes, there's a way to tell. Hang on a second. First of all, we'd be in the barometer. Nothing changes there. That's fine. Oop, drift there. If we hit pull up the um, VFR map quickly, we can click on the airport if we can get to it right there. And here we go, weather. Um, two knots from 320 degrees. We only have one way to choose one runway to choose from. That's not right. Why is there only one runway to choose from? Eight is going to be this one. The wind is coming from up here, so we have a slight crosswind tailwind. I guess it's only two knots. That's kind of weird. Why is it doing that? Already one runway eight it is. Which way are we going? We're kind of going to the east and then south, right? As jerk, traffic turtle soup tango, 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 4-1 taking off runway, 08 east departure. Let's hop out here and see. I don't even look at this yet. Where are we? Where's the runway? Is it way over there? 26 would be way more appropriate, because if you take away the zero, wind from 32 is closer to 26, that's only six digits. Eight, well, that's 100 and something, 186 or something. So, 186 or 180, whatever, it doesn't matter. So we're going to go to the other runway, even though it wasn't an option. <sighs> Anywho, here we go. Those of you who have watched all my bush trips, thank you. I might sound different today. I'm not in a hurry. I'm just trying to be a little different about it. You're going to go here? What's your problem? It's like stuck to the ground. That's weird. Um, ooh, it's going to do the jittery thing. It's not my computer. It's when you're in handcrafted areas that they custom make for the sim for these world updates. Um, you're getting information from the servers. A lot of it is on the client, but a lot is still on the servers too. So, they've been struggling for the past couple months with getting that information. So it struggles to load things. Eventually it smooths out. It's been a problem for, I don't know, nine months now. And they did acknowledge it in the live stream and on the Discord. So it's not my computer, it's not my imagination. It's annoying though. Alrighty, um, is that AM or PM? It must be AM, right? Yeah, it's AM, thank goodness. Alrighty, we have autopilot set up. The reason why we use autopilot is so I can look around. We will adjust our elevate elevation. We'll adjust our altitude if needed. And um, very, very, very simple. Let's turn on landing lights a little early just because I can. Um, incredibly simple. This should probably fall into the easy category, I would already imagine. 
since there's not a whole lot of terrain. It's in the 172. You have GPS if you want it. You have autopilot if you want it. Um, that kind of thing. What message do you have for me? Set course. Yeah, okay, fine. They want me to set my course over here to line up with what we're going to turn, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to use autopilot using GPS. Alrighty, what are we doing? We're just going to take off, right? We're going to turn around. Or take off and turn around. Hand fly for a moment. And then we'll um, let autopilot do the work. How come that won't let me zoom in on that thing anymore? It lets me zoom out. I can zoom out further. There's no way I'm zoomed in all the way. Maybe I am. Alrighty, here we go. We're not even going to slow down or anything. We're just going to turn and burn and get going on this leg. Two legs in this first video should be edited down enough to something consumable. Which it sometimes is, sometimes isn't. And how far away was that cathedral? Only six minutes. So probably won't have a sightseeing session. It'll probably just be making cuts because you never need to sit through the entire thing. That's a long time. You follow GPS here if you want to, and that's what I meant by setting course to 146. There's this card here. While we're trying to take off, I'm pointing at things. You can set that if you want to. That's the old school way to do it. Now you just um, look at your GPS. I could have taken off way sooner. <laughs> Brakes to stop the wheels. Gears fixed. Flaps coming up. We will hand fly for a moment. Hopefully I don't start yelling. My personal volume is very loud. And if you want to know where to go, just follow that little rectangle. And we're over the airfield now beyond it let's go this is so nice and silky smooth this airplane is so easy to fly you just have to make sure you don't overspeed that's all and we'll do standard rate turn and look at the ocean oh keep climbing you gotta pull back when you turn and it's yellow below us because we're relatively close to the ground yet as long as it's not red i'm looking at the other second gps here there we go. Ooh, look at that beautiful highway. I think, okay, I've done all these bush trips pretty much back to back from the Nordics and Greenland update, and this clearly is the best scenery of them all. This is insane. This scenery is absolutely insane. Wow. I don't know what to say. All right, here we go. Let's make our turn to 146 now. You know it's 146 because it says right there. And we may have flown past our track, but that's okay. Whoa, let's not hit the farmer's house. You could literally fly this bush trip just like this if you wanted to. I have to move over a little bit to see your GPS. Or again, you can look at this here if you want to. That's how we used to do it. Alrighty, we'll go a little bit past 146. We're at 153, or look here. There you go. You could literally fly the whole thing like this. But we're not going to. Alrighty, I think we can engage autopilot now. So we'll hit autopilot, please. Autopilot and nav, please. And vertical speed, 700 feet per minute. That's fine. It just defaults to that. If you want to adjust it, you just start moving the buttons up and down, and then this will change to VS. That's not VS 2000. That's going to stop at 2000. What are we at? 1500. So there we go. We'll stay nice and low so we can see stuff. I just got to make sure you don't overspeed because it is possible. It will damage your aircraft and we have to redo the leg. So we've got 11.3 nautical miles to the cathedral. So, um, let's look outside a minute. <laughs> oh, that's good. Let me get the, oh, that's very loud. Let me um, get some screen, potential screenshots here. Sunrise looking across Denmark or Sweden. What did it say we're doing? Oh my gosh, I've lost my mind. Denmark. Jeez, I knew that. Well, that was a good shot. And there is the ocean. Some city below us. But the cathedral is out there 11 nautical miles. So maybe this clump of buildings? We'll just have to see in a second, won't we? Well, that we're leveled off. I have to, have to do some speed control here. I'm bringing back throttle just a little bit because we're at 125 now. I do not want to get in the yellow if I can help it. So I'm still bringing back throttles. It's still speeding up. I'm looking right here. But, um... 
That should be good, right there. Alrighty, we're following our GPS on every way. There's looking here, there's looking there. We're um, all set. Three, four minutes out yet from the cathedral. A beautiful ocean view with rivers coming together. wonder what that island is out there. Oh, beautiful. The sun glare is in the way, but it's still beautiful. I'm not going to adjust the weather either. It's perfect. The preset weather is absolutely perfect. And there's our highway we're supposed to be following, I think. All right, two minutes out. Until we find this cathedral. Oh, I see it. Sticking up right there. Can't miss it. So let's read about the next thing quickly, because it will turn us automatically. From here in five minutes, we'll reach um, a tower from the cathedral. Turn south and follow the course of Road 11. And the railway that parallels the highway. Gain a visual of the town of Skerbeck. I don't know. Just south of the intersection. And then site the Marsk Camp and Tower. Okie dokie. Tower's 82 feet. Observation tower. That looks awesome. Comprom comprised of double spiral staircase. You can read about the rest of it. Millions of migrating birds. Cool. So that's only five minutes from here. And the computer will take us right to it. Because why not? What we're going to do is we're going to hop outside. Oh dear, that thing went crooked. I tried to preset up our view, but we got a crooked on us. And we'll go over the town. Come on, come on, cooperate. Whatever, we'll leave it like that. And we'll keep an eye on this cathedral. Alrighty, there you go. You can't miss it. Sticks out like a sore thumb. So does that, whatever that thing is. And that too. So there we go. Enjoy the view. Looking pretty. The plane's going to turn itself in just a second. And um, a couple, yeah, a lot of stuff. A couple of big buildings there with spirals and things. Alrighty. And our plane is turning itself on its way to the observation tower, which hopefully we can spot in about five minutes, I think. Oof, that was kind of a jumpy way to make the turn. Had a hard time following that, didn't it? Alrighty, I am following along on Google Maps, just because I can, and because I believe that the overview image that I kept in this time, I think that was upside down, I think north was down, I think, I'll have to go back and editing, but I was looking at that, I'm like, that looks weird, but anyway, I do know where we are. My world, ge my world geography, especially for an American, is quite good, I've always been proud of it. Alrighty, now what, it's going to tell us to turn the thing, right? Approaching VNAV profile. Oh, cool. I remember I used to do all this stuff in X-Plane. I used to use everything you could in these Garmin things. But um, time to change a little bit. I'm a lot more serious of a flight simmer in a lot of ways. But I rely on things like GPS in other ways. Just because I've done so much slant alpha and stuff in X-Plane that I'm kind of at the point now. I just kind of let autopilot and FMS do everything. Anyway, this wasn't supposed to be a chatty video, and it's going to be one of my most chatty. So, 7.7 .7 nautical miles, and we'll look for that cool-looking tower. Two minutes out, but let's look around in between, right? We don't need to just jump from location to location. Um, that's a cool how that town has spread along the roads. We can look around a little bit in between. And again, this is the best scenery I've seen in a bush trip in a long, long time. I'm so happy, of course. Asperl can only use what's available to them when they make these bush trips and update their scenery and stuff for various world updates um, and that's why there have been some areas of the world they have not updated people complain why haven't you done this area why have you done this area twice but not that area well because maybe that other area they haven't done doesn't have very good data available and it looks like crap and we can't do anything about it yet or the government there won't let them fly the planes to get the data that happens too Anyway, alrighty, I'm feeling very chatty today. I do not apologize, though. So that means the next video will probably just be sightseeing without me talking. You never know. Another town along... Oh, hang on. Is that something we're supposed to look at? No, but there's another cathedral there. Right there. Look at that. That's beautiful. There's all these trees around and stuff. They must have planted them? Or they took down the trees for the farmland. I don't know, but that looks wonderful. Let's get an inside view of that. That's my favorite little town so far. Wow, amazing. All right, less than a minute to the tower, so let's look at the next thing we're supposed to read here. 
Um, and the tower looks like it's, oh, it looks like it's by that city. So maybe right here. We'll have to get there in a second. After that, six minutes out, just heading, uh, just heading and parallel the road to the town of Tonder. Tonde. The town is located on the confluence of the rivers. Denmark's border of Germany. One mile north of Denmark's border of Germany. The town is renowned for its well-preserved and 7 18th century houses. Okay, cool. So we'll look for that in six and a half minutes. For right now, though, let's look for this tower. It says it's 0.8 miles away. I don't... There it is, right there. Right there. So again, we can fly down to almost ground level to look at this stuff, and then we got to fly up again. So there is your observation tower. Not sure what you're observing. Well, the ocean for sure. Maybe the town? Not sure. It's a beautiful town. And there is a bridge. That looks like Roma. It just popped up on my Google Maps. Romo? Romo and Havenby. That's what this is. Romo. I think. Romo. I can't see that far. Google, my other monitor is way too far away. I can't see it. And zooming in doesn't make it bigger. So there we go. Okay, here we go. Five minutes, 12.7 nautical miles. And we'll look at the town of Thunder. Alright, this is one of those moments where no matter how good my world geography is, I looked up Thunder on the map. Well, I didn't have to look up. I was just following the road. And it is on the border of Germany. And I did not realize that Germany has this huge peninsula that sticks out this far. Obviously, I know where Germany is and everything. But I did not know they had this peninsula. So that's cool. So we're going to ride the border of the peninsula with um, Denmark. Huh, that's really cool. You can look that up on Google Maps yourself if you want to. But I thought that was interesting. Maybe it's not that interesting. I thought so. Anyway. On our way to Tonder, and then we'll be looking across into Germany, obviously quite easily from this elevation. Altitude, not elevation, altitude. Beautiful farmland, beautiful sunrise, and this town coming into view is not Tonder, but it's gorgeous. I'm going to let this run a second so we can see this awesome town, which I could probably look it up on Google Maps, but I'm not that worried about the detail. But I just like this area here. It's really cool. This little intersection thing reminds me of... Um, is it Hot Springs, South Dakota? Or Mount Rushmore? Or is it something else Springs? I can't remember. But anyway, I thought that town looked cool. Well, look at that. There's like a dirt bike track or something. Um, so anyway, where are we at? Ooh, only three minutes out from this town, which is going to be right here. So it's coming into view, so let's read about the next thing. That means Germany is right here, like this is the border right there of Germany. And then you're facing south, of course. I really wish these would stay collapsed like in the beginning they used to stay collapsed. Alrighty, 12 minutes from the town, which is right here, we're going to Graston Palace. Ooh. Turn east over Ton... Tur... 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 Yeah. Okay, here's the trick to pick this out. It's the urs and urine. So, turn der, turn der. Right, except for local dialects. We talked about that in the Norway video on Oslo. It's an O up north. It's because my kid has no flesh. So anyway, follow this, <laughs> follow that place, and go there. Maintain a heading of the towns. Gain a visual of that place, a small bay, which is right here, and look for the palace. There we go. We'll look for the palace on the shore of a lake. Okie dokie. That's only twelve minutes. Twelve minutes out. But first, let's enjoy our town. <sighs> Maybe I shouldn't talk when I don't know what I'm talking about. Sunrise is on that side, but it's glaring off the water on that side. So it looks like we have a double sunrise. Ooh, look at that wind turbine. Very cool. Looks like a double sunrise. Anyway, I always thought it'd be fascinating if we had, like, multiple moons and multiple suns we could see and stuff. That would be cool. Um, anyway, coming up on the town, we're going to use this view once we get there. Whoa. A little bit of updraft from the train below. And there we go. It's a good-sized town, and the plane will turn itself when it's ready to go check out the palace. Lots of ways down the road. Sky Road, I might say. That's a pretty big city. It's very easily determined to see how it's broken up too. And this must be the old part of the city along the river. That would make sense, right? And then as you get modern as it goes around or goes away from the water. Basic um, civilization, right? 
build where there's water and farmland. You start there. That's why that's where all the older buildings are. And you just move out as you expand. So it gets more and more modern the further away you go from the resources. Very beautiful. I like the football field. Multiple fo lots of football fields. Very cool. Alrighty. Ooh, heading into the sun to go to the palace, which is, ooh, only 10 minutes out. Alright, not so bad. Um, let's go over there. But of course we'll enjoy some beautiful scenery along the way. Look at the shadows. I'm so glad I can keep shadows on and keep my super high frame rate. It really does make a difference. It makes a huge difference to have shadows on, so I'm very happy about that. Um, but this is definitely the best scenery I've seen in a bush trip in a very, very long time. So I'm quite pleased because then when I refly this thing off camera, assuming we're not making progress at both bush trips at once, um, I'll just be able to look around more and just look and enjoy it and just land every 20 minutes apparently. But um, this is incredible. So right now, if you think of Denmark, the big left island looking part of it, we're actually flying across along the border of Germany. So if we look over here, this is Germany about here. I don't have the exact border for you. I'm pretty sure it's not this river. Maybe it is. Let me zoom in. No. There are many rivers between here and Germany. So, um, yeah. This is not the border of Germany, but it's very close. It's like right here. So that's kind of cool. That's cool too. Look at all that farmland stuff. Man, that's so amazing what the computer can do based on satellite imagery. More farmland and wind turbines, but it's still just as gorgeous to look at. And there's the road that we're following right below us. In case you're wondering, ooh, there's a little town there along that river. That's pretty cool. I wonder what it'd be like to live here. Oh, okay, so here we go. So these are the bays and the water, and it kind of opened out to the ocean eventually. But it's more like the sea, you know, the Baltic Sea. So the Baltic Sea is over here. It comes in and wraps around up into here with a bunch of bays and things. And then the sea is actually... I don't think we can see the sea anymore from where, whoop, from where we are. Uh, maybe. You can see a little bit right there. So that's where we are. Baltic Sea is wrapping around. And um, you hear my mouse clicking because I'm moving Google Maps. I'm on the monitor. Sorry, I don't have it recorded, but... They don't always follow Google Maps. I just thought since this is such a very, very basic, simple bush trip, I'm going to follow the maps. So I don't get bored. <laughs> Anywho, where are we at? Six minutes yet till we get to the palace. Because the palace is on the water right out here. Oops, sorry, right out there. And then we'll turn a little bit to get to Sondeborg. And that's where we'll end. I guess an outside view won't hurt, right? That's pretty gorgeous. Big old roundabouts. See, the roundabouts in Europe are the right size. In the U.S. are tiny. They take regular intersections and stick a roundabout in there, which is more like a traffic circle, but they operate as roundabouts. And then people here stop. Of course, the law here is if someone else is in the roundabout, you have to yield for them. But in a lot of cases, even if someone else is in the roundabout, you still have plenty of time to keep going. But people will stop, and then it ends up not being as efficient as it could be. But it's still more efficient than a regular intersection. Mostly it's a lot safer than a regular intersection. Um, it's just you've got people who know how to use them, and people who are timid, and then that does not work together very well. But anyway, there we go. Our palace is going to be right there in just a couple moments. Alright, looks like this town is called Clip-Live. Clip -live, right there with some water nearby. This long lake here is called... Oh boy. Stor... Sogerard... So... Whatever. <laughs> it's something. I don't know. But Gratsten... Gratsten... Gra I don't know how the A with the thing is pronounced. Gratsten... is literally this stuff right here. This whole area. So our palace is right in front of us. And then we'll make our turn. Um, first things first though and for the next leg it's going to be the same video but for the next leg I'm going to do the sightseeing approach so I don't talk too much so there you go
that's how I'm going to do the next leg in just a couple minutes. Alright, final look at farmland before we head into Creston. And then there's a big old town there. Oh, wow, that's really far away. Oh, that's Flensburg. In what? Germany, yeah, Flensburg, Germany. Okay, cool. So we're still flying along the border of Germany. Pretty close to us, like right around here. That's pretty awesome. Alright, look at that house. It's not symmetrical. Huh, my kind of thing. Okay, dokie, we've got a palace two minutes away. Don't want to miss it. Do you see a palace yet? What does it look like on the reference image? Um, it has the water behind it, so it's in here somewhere. I would imagine. So let's go outside and get our other view ready to go. And then we'll have a look at this palace. I don't know why I'm so excited about a palace. <laughs> Alrighty, there's the town in view while I fight through some hiccups. And I don't see the palace yet. Um, I got it right there. I don't think it had. Let me see what it looks like here. Um, why am I not seeing this palace? Am I that blind? I know it's in there. Y'all can probably see it. I don't see it. Um. Oh, there it is. Is that it right there? Perhaps. That's not what the image looked like, though. Sometimes the images don't look like what we're looking for, because I think they update things sometimes <laughs> after they've taken the images. Um. Oh, no. Yeah, that was it. Okay, never mind. I just wasn't paying attention to detail, which is strange because I'm very detail oriented. Okay, last bit of talking here. Then we'll land the airplane. And then we'll move on to the next leg with less talking. How about that? Turn on to a northeast heading and skirt the northern shore. Gain a visual on us all sund. Long narrows spanned by the bridge that separates the mainland from the other land. Oh, shoot. We already passed that because that was back here thing it we missed it right this thing not showing up that's weird never mind okay i guess we didn't miss anything um do 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 gain a visual cross to the north bridge by the town and land at the, oh because we haven't gotten there yet duh we get to the bridge okay but it should be very close I only said three minutes away so we should be in any second and then we'll land at the airport so we'll take over manually in a minute Okay, so the airport is in front of us. Should we tune in traffic if it's available? Um, one, tune traffic. What are our options? 32 and 14. I don't remember what we did before. Let's do 32. So we'll land from the right to the left. Announce full stop landing and position. Sonderborg traffic turtle soup tango tango tango. 414 miles west, 2,000 feet inbound to land runway tree 2. And it's that bit of land in front of us. Is it there for right there? Yes, it is. Okay, cool. Uh, turn off autopilot, right? I said autopilot off, off. Where's the click spot for this? There we go. Do we have a bridge? I guess the bridge is way over here. Whoop, there it is right there. So we're going to go fly by the bridge a little bit, not to go see it, but just because I want to make a left traffic pattern. So now we're going to do our down one leg. Sonderborg traffic turtle soup, tango, 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 4-1, is on downwind, runway tree 2. Very simple. And there's the city. And there's the bridge. And there we go. Very straightforward. So we're just going to do a basic left traffic pattern. Very, very simple. We'll fly out. Let's slow down a little bit. Maintain altitude, though. And then we'll, um land right over there all right there you go there's your town and there's your bridge and there's the water there's the airport let's come in on a base we'll have a very short final we don't need much of a final Sonderborg here Sonderborg traffic turtle soup tango 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 four one is on base runway tree two can't see anything because we're so tall so let's get some flaps out now um seriously can't see anything because we're so tall our head is sticking up in the clouds. Alrighty, we gotta slow down. So we're gonna nose up to slow down. We might have to slip this in. 
Um, I really can't see where the runway is. And I already know it's going to be a quick find. Oh, there it is. Oh, boy. Okay, first set of flaps. Um, it was much closer to the water than I thought it was. Don't want to lose sight of it. Don't get too low too soon, so we're going to keep this at altitude. Let's see how we get a little closer. And we're not final. Sonderborg traffic turtle soup tango, 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 4 1 is on final runway tree 2 to land. We do not need full flap because we have a very long runway, but I'm going to use full flap anyway because I love stopping as quickly as possible. That way, when we do get to a tiny runway in a bush trip someday, which we might have in this one, then I can already have the practice. So, very short final. We're going to turn over the lights. Kind of approaching at an angle here, but that's okay. Let's come down a little bit. Throttles back to descend. Don't nose down to descend. You bring throttles back to descend. If you nose down, you'll speed up. So you bring throttles back, but maintain your attitude. That way you hold the same speed. And you hear clicking. That's my ring. I started wearing my wedding rings again. Because I lost like 12 pounds after the surgery, which is perfect. Not that I needed to lose 12 pounds, but because I did, my rings fit again. Alrighty, here we go. Very straightforward. Put the lines between your legs. And then um, aim for the numbers. We're getting kind of slow. <laughs> I'm getting a little overconfident here in this airplane. A um, little bit of wind. A little bit. Just enough. But very straightforward. Coming down. Oh, my goodness. Throttles back over the threshold. Round out a little bit. Let ground effect soften us out. Keep it between the legs. And come on. There we go. Gently flaps coming up and slam on the brakes we're going to try to stop right not stop i'm going to try to go over here like so there we go and then we'll now clear runway as soon as we're off the runway oh i thought this was a parking spot it's going to be now clear of runway there we go sonderborg traffic turtle soup tango 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 41 is clear of the runway Alrighty, and let's stop here Set the parking brake, come down here, turn off whatever you want to for fun. You don't really have to turn off anything, you can just kill your power. And um, it should go cold and dark. There we go, it's almost even done. Alrighty, cool, we're going to do a second leg, but it'll be a lot less talking in this next leg. So those of you who like talking, sorry. Those of you who prefer less talking, this is your moment. Let's go to the next leg. Yeah, they did move us a little bit. Where do they put us? They put us in a more favorable position, I guess. Um, oh, there was a whole parking. <laughs> we were over here. No, we weren't. Where were we? Right here. We stopped so quickly, I thought that was the end of it. But there's this whole section over here. That's okay. That is totally okay. I did not realize there's more going on. All right, let's start this thing up. First, we're going to repair and refuel. I don't know where the fuel is. It's probably over there somewhere. No, here it is. You can't see it, though. Um, we'll do that in a second, then, if we get started up. All right, here we go. We got this. We got that. Um, do they have this pull? Oh, it's still pushed in. That's good. Strobe, because we're going to start up. And fuel pump, because we want to be cool. Come on, and let's start this thing up. should be pretty straightforward. And this should stay running. And why are our cabin lights so bright? I noticed that last time in the previous um, leg. I can never find a click spot for these doesn't matter that is so bright though i'll figure out later all right pedo heat avionics get going here um taxi lights on we can do fuel pump off although we should have it on when we take off let's go over here let this stuff start up while that's starting up let's read about what's going on all right half an hour leg we'll cut it down though Air island lift off and head a course over the island you can read about this all yourself Our agriculture production Words I can't pronounce, 10,000 years old. No bridge, only accessible by ferry. So what we're going to do is we'll do sightseeing without me talking out to this island. Then we're going to keep going without me talking. But you're not going to miss anything in between with what you see. Does that make sense? I'm going to condense it so it's not a half an hour for you. But you're not going to miss anything. So after that, there's a city. Um, the largest town on that island, known for its shipbuilding. So we're going to look for an island and we're going to look for a town. And then we're going to keep going. Fly over the northern extremity of the bay to Long Island. The island, which measures 31 miles, is known for agricultural productivity and is a popular tourist destination. 
Alright, so we'll get the islands and the cities in sightseeing. Then we're going to keep going without me talking. Continue, fly out over the belt. Go over the fjord, a small bay. You can pause and read more. Tiny island off the fjord. First naval dockyard. Okie dokie. And then, what should we do? Um, I think we'll talk. come back together here. So you're going to see islands, towns, more islands. And then when we start heading towards this, POI 9, we'll come back, talk about that, talk about the report. So that's how that's going to work. So this is an example of doing a bunch of stuff at once. Just because. Uh, let me get this figured out again. All right, good enough. I don't have the rectangle on the bottom, but it doesn't matter because I'm just using the computer. So we should be good to go. Um, one set of flaps down. Taxi lights, everything. I'll figure out the lights when I'm in the air. You're, you know what you're going to look for now, right? But islands, basically, with towns on the islands. Pretty straightforward. And then we'll come back to the other one. It's about time to land. Okay. Um, can I select a runway for takeout? Oh, we have to repair and refuel first. Um, wow, that was, we're almost empty. Bam! Repair and refuel. Um, what way are we facing? This is one way 14. Then. Ouch! You know what we should do? We should just go ahead and see where the heck are we. Whatever runway that is. That's 14. Yes, he's 14. Why not? We can do that if we want to. Flight sim is what you make of it. Announce to the east. We're pretty much going straight east. Sonderborg traffic turtle soup tango. Tango tango. 4-1 taking off runway. 1-4 east departure. Alrighty, I'm going to taxi us over there. If you wanted to do fuel their way, there's your fuel box there. You just pull up to it, hit the parking brake, fuel will pop up. Um, or you can go into fuel up here. Wait a few, you can do that way. Or I just have repair and refuel marked on my keyboard. Because in the olden days of the sim, like two and a half years ago, You'd have to use repair and refill on a keyboard to do it. And are we going to get out to this runway? Wait a second. What am I doing? What am I doing? I'm losing it is what's happening. Alrighty, let's come down here and let's get going. We're going to do a midfield takeoff because we can. Um, we can do the fuel pump when we take off. That's fine. Alrighty, here we go. So once they take off, I have to remember to turn off the... Oh, I didn't set up autopilot. Oh my gosh, I was thinking this was a hand-flying plane because that other bush trip I did was hand-flying forever. So once we're in the air, we'll set up autopilot. That's what we'll do. Alrighty, which means we want to head to what? Um, 88 degrees. So let's pop up. Bam. Brakes us off the wheels. Barometer set. Compass drifted a little bit. Flaps coming up. And, can we do this without crashing into anything as we turn 88 degrees? We'll keep 2,000. We'll do heading, nav, nav, thank you. Vertical speed, I don't know what it was. 1,200 feet per minute, whatever. Does it matter? I oh, guess it does matter. Um, down. These click spots are so strange. Let's be interview for a minute because we're getting really slow. Even that's too slow. Come on. Seven or three per minute? That's better. Alrighty. Um. Do 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 do. 88 degrees. Yes, we know this. Um. Everything's set. Once we get up here, should turn us to the line. No problem. Man, these click spots are just driving me bonkers. I do want to get my thing up, though, because it'll give us the DME. So just keep an eye on stuff. Not turning loose the sightseeing. Don't worry, I'm not going to talk the whole time. I'm just trying to get stuff set up, and it'll be on our way. There it is. I just needed the tiny arrow for the cursor. All right, 13 nautical miles. We'll get to the first place, which I forgot what it was. Hopefully you remember. <laughs> Bunch of islands. And I'll see you. Is it uh, POI 8? POI 8. You'll see me again. No, POI 9. POI 9, you'll POI 8, we'll talk about 9 in the airport. Yeah, okay. Alright, no problem. See you in a little bit.
All right, we're flying up on Naxkov, which is right here, this huge area. So, as promised, let's read about the final place and then the um, airport. So from here, we're going to head a little bit to the south. And we're going to pass over, sorry, I my breath. I'm passing over a lush mosaic of fields. Lowland is Denmark's fourth largest island and renowned for its agricultural productivity, notably sugar and sugar beets. And I must say, I'm very much enjoying flying over all these islands of Denmark. I didn't realize, I've never been so granular about the country, so I'm really, really enjoying this. Continue on course to the town on the south shore. It lies at the head of a small harbor, home to a fleet of ferries that transit to and from the German village of Puttgarden on the island of Fenmarn. So, there we go. There's an island just south of ferries. I see the ferry path in Google Maps. It's almost like a hammerhead shark looking thing coming off of Germany. So after that, we'll go to Lowland Falster Airport, also called Mirabeau Airport. And what's happening to our autopilot? Alrighty, so we're going to go to Rod by Haven. And then there's a little airport nearby, just two minutes away. So that should pop into the GPS as soon as we turn around the corner here. And um, we're done with sightseeing, so which means you have a little bit of talking to deal with. That's okay. But anyway, so I condense all that 20 minute something flight, 30 minute flight. Take away a little bit, it's so like 25 minute flight down into a couple minutes for you. You did not miss anything. I was very careful to curate scenes that would show off everything. So here is Nord, not not Nord, that Naxgov, right up here in front of the airplane. Whoa, hi, passing through. Don't mind me. And um, and head over there. I see Rob having right there, starting to render in already. Very cool. There's a better view of the town. In any second, the airplane should turn itself, and then we'll be on our way. I was able to turn on, turn down the glitter shoe. By the way, it's just this inner one here, um, which is hard to get the mouse in the right spot. All right, what we got? Oh, we gotta wait till we make the turn before we get our next distance. Is going to be five minutes to ride by Haven. So let's um, hang out together while we get there. Looks like our airport has been spotted because we're going to fly to the city and then make a sharp left onto the runway and I can tell because that's what the GPS is telling us to do. So let's zoom this in a little bit like that. Let's tune in the airport, which is what again? Mike Bravo, if we can tune it in, if there's anything there. Um, yes, yes, turn in traffic. We will use a north-facing runway, which will be 28, which I guess is actually, um, wait a second. No, we want 10. We want the east-facing runway. What am I thinking? Yeah, we want the east-facing runway, so that's 10. Let's announce full stop landing in our position. Echo Kilo Mike Bravo, traffic turtle soup, tango, 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 4111 miles northwest, 2,000 feet inbound to land runway 10. This is going to be interesting. Um, running orientation is like this. We're going to go to the city, make a sharp turn back, and it might be a dog leg to the right by the time we get there. We'll have to see. Might as well give this part of the country some love. Very beautiful. Not much water within the islands, though. So that's interesting. Like there aren't any ponds or small lakes. So that's kind of kind of different. Maybe not. Maybe I'm just expecting more water because I'm from Minnesota. I think we could head straight to the airport and it'll let us land and it would count the leg, but we might as well go to the city. It's only 6.6 .6 miles away, not a couple miles away anyway. And we want to see everything they have for us to see, so why not? Yep, we would turn for final right now, but we're not, so we're going to come out, make a very sharp turn to come back, and then turn right to land. That's what we're going to have to do. And that is totally okay. We'll slow ourselves way down because the slower you go horizontally or laterally gives you much more time. Look how perfectly grid system that is set up. Same with that one, but especially that one. That's wild. Bye, airport. We'll be back. Don't worry. Get ready for us. All right. There's our town right there with the water coming in. Again, water sources where they set up towns. 
Um, I think we'll actually get to it before we turn. I just want to be set up here to see it. Alright, it's kind of like suburbia here. Interesting. And then maybe the older part of the town up here. Huh. Anyway, very cool. There you go. Pause it if you want to see more, but we got to get going. So let's take off autopilot and let's make a steep corner. Corner? Steep turn. Bring back throttle so we slow down. Buy ourselves as much time as we can. Try to spot this airport. Descend no more than 500 feet for now. So another city around 1500 or so. There's a runway. We're just going to turn back over this town. Let's announce base because that's what we're doing really. Echo Kilo Mike Bravo, traffic turtle soup, Tango, 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 41 is on base runway 10. We're at 1500 feet, but we're going to come down a little bit more because we're much closer to the airport than I thought we were. Um, as far as our speed, I could slip it. Slipping is when you knock the yaw out of, out of sync so that you um, slow down and descend very quickly without speeding up. Because normally if you um, descend very quickly, you speed up. But um, Basically, it turns you into a, from a paper airplane to a rock, basically, is what happens. First set of flaps, be mindful of our speed. I'm looking at the runway there. Second set of flaps, we'll do full flaps on the way in. We do not need full flaps, but I like to use them because I like to practice my very short field landings just in case we end up in a short field runway, which I think we have in the next one. And let's announce final as we're about to turn on the final. Echo Kilo Mike Bravo, traffic turtle soup Tango 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 41 is on final runway 10 to land. All right, full flap a little early, but I'm going to do it. We can descend a little bit here. We're not going to lose sight of the runway. Keep our speed about 72 or so, that's fine. Um, that's about all there is to say. Let's just look out the window one final time. Look at those buildings and cathedrals and everything. Common theme here in Denmark. Um, is Denmark Catholic? Mostly, I would assume so. Don't hate me if I'm wrong, but I think it's Catholic. That's the reason for all the... Um, cathedrals and spires and everything. Alrighty, coming in nice and easy. Again, put it all between your legs. If you put everything between your legs, you'll be just fine in life, especially landing at an airport. So that's how you think of it. No matter how big your equipment is, 747, 172, put it between your legs, and you'll be perfectly lined up. It took me 25 years of flight sim to actually pay attention to that. <laughs> I used to just land like I was on the road on the sides. Anywho, here we go. A little bit crosswinds. That's weird. I don't think there'd be any wind in this bush trip. Alrighty, here we go. Nice and easy. We could go a little slower, though. Let's stick around 68. Sure, 65. Good enough. Feels like we're going way too fast, but we're not. Coming down. A little steep for glide slope, but that's okay. Aim for the numbers now. And here we go. I'm going to land as soon as I can just to practice landing quickly. Throttles back. Leaning back. Tease the stall horn, perhaps. That was quite a float. Ew, that was not very good. That's weird. My first landing was way better. Granted, there's a huge hill under us. That came up quickly, but that shouldn't have mattered. Um, flaps are in. We're just going to ride this out. But I did want to stop as quickly as possible. Yeah, there's no wind. I don't know why I was thinking crosswind. And here we go. We'll go cold and dark at the end. And that'll end this second leg. So you need to subscribe and turn on notifications to know when the next legs drop. You need to hit the like button so people know we exist. I'm pretty sure I'm the only person doing every bush trip in the sim. At least no one else on YouTube is that I could find. Um, people tell me they find my videos very helpful. Even though they're not tutorials, they say they often learn more than they do in a tutorial just by picking up things that I do. So... I do this for everybody. Of course, I enjoy it, or I wouldn't do it at all. Um, I think we can taxi off here, and then we'll shut this thing down. And then we're going to jump out to the main menu and see if we're making progress on both the matching bush, bush trips at once, which would be nice, but I doubt it. But that'd be nice. I'm going to try. Um, otherwise, 
I'm gonna have to go Echo back. Kilo Mike Bravo, traffic turtle soup tango 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 four one is clear of the runway. And redo this bush trip in a different airplane off camera. But that one I can just set it and come back every 20 minutes and land or whatever, but still that's kind of silly to do the same one twice. Come on. I want us to park here because everyone's standing around. A lot of manpower for my little Cessna, and I cannot turn. Come on. Goodness gracious. I know, I really wish I had differential braking set up. I keep talking about that, and I have not yet set it up. I'm trying to turn over there. And just tell me to stop. And Okay, I'll stop here. Thank you. Oofta. Okay. Come down here, I know it's blinding her with my lights. I didn't turn fuel pump off either once I got in the air. I don't use my full checklist for these. Um, I just don't really need to. But in a regular flight, I would. And here we go. That should turn it off. There we go. Okay, let's go to the main menu here. And let's see. Nope, it doesn't make progress on both. I didn't think it would, but I was hoping it would. So I'll have to do this other one off camera later. Let's not worry about it. So anyway, be subscribed so you know when the next legs drop. Hit the like button so you know we exist. I'll see you next time.